the past 55 days feel frozen in time. Kind of feels like Groundhog's Day to us. For Eli and Jennifer. It's like we're on repeat. Piper. We're just waiting for the day to change. In addition to working full time, the couple makes a two hour round trip commute to Children's Minnesota nearly every day, holding on to each other while holding out hope for a heart. Hi, buddy. That might save the heart of their family. Hi. This is Ozzy. <laughs> He's six and a half months old. Ozzy Logan Piper was born on August 4th and seemed perfectly healthy until the morning of December 30th. Something was very off with him that day. Ozzy couldn't keep any food down, so Eli brought him in, and doctors ordered some tests and a chest x-ray, which showed that Ozzy had an enlarged heart. It's a lethal thing. Dr. Eric Eden says more tests at Children's Minnesota found that Ozzy had dilated cardiomyopathy, a disease that weakens the heart muscle and affects only about 1 in 100,000 children. How critical is it that they caught this when they did. It's very critical. Sometimes the first sign we get that something happened is the child actually dies. Hi, buddy. The Wazi entered Children's Minnesota in good spirits. Say good morning. A day after this video, good he went morning. into cardiac arrest and doctors put him on a ventilator. I thought the worst and thought we were going to lose a, another son. You see, just two years ago, Jennifer suffered complications during her first pregnancy. Yes, 22 weeks along. I went into preterm labor and they weren't able to stop the contractions and we ended up having our first son early. They each got a chance to hold their son Logan before he died, just two hours after birth. It was really tough coming back to this place after we lost Logan and we had to drive back down here. It all was like a big flashback. But this time, Ozzy's doctors are optimistic. An external Berlin heart is now pumping blood for him, and he is now off of the ventilator and regaining his strength. What's happening, buddy? But this will be the extent of any family travels unless he gets a new infant heart. Unfortunately, the wait times for babies are extremely long, and the national data is about 30% of babies that are waiting will die waiting because there's just not enough hearts. Hoping for such a precious gift is impossibly difficult. The day that we get a heart is great news for us, but it's devastating news for another family. Somebody's tragedy is going to be our miracle. So they pray that baby Logan won't be Ozzy's only guardian angel. He's still alive, so there's always hope. And that's a feeling worth freezing in time. It's a lot better than the alternative. Now, despite everything that they have been through, the Pipers tell me that they are thankful tonight. They're thankful first for their community in Hamburg, Minnesota, just outside of the Twin Cities here, because they've helped set up several fundraisers and helped set up a GoFundMe page, which you can find along with this story on care11.com. But they're also so thankful that they followed their gut and they saw a doctor when they thought something was wrong. It's something that we've seen many families avoid during this pandemic. Well, Kent, there's so many things that are heartbreaking about the story, not the least of which is they both have to work, so they have to leave every day and come back again and yeah. leave their baby there. That is yeah, just heartbreaking. Tough. And I know this had to hit close to home for you too, Kent, the baby about that same age, beautifully told. We wish them the best and hope everyone checks out that GoFundMe account. Thanks, Kent.